If you're having difficulty flushing your pick line or you can't withdraw blood or you have partial occlusion of your pick line, look no further because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to declot with Ultiplace, also known as TPA, and safety precautions as a live demo. But before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome, my name is Tina, nurse practitioner. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. All right, let's begin with why your pick line is clotted. First, make sure the line is not clamped because it has happened to all of us at some point. Okay, some reasons it can clot is if the line is not flushed adequately per your hospital protocol guidelines. So as a general rule, most manufacturers recommend you flush lines that are not in use at least every 12 hours with 0.9% sodium chloride or after completion of every medication administration, for example, like your antibiotics, or your PRN medications such as um, hydralazine flushes are just a couple to mention. So another reason the lumen can feel like it's um, kinked is if the pick line is in the upper extremity and the patient's neck is twisted towards that side of the pick line, it can occlude the flow and cause this blockage or like an upstream occlusion from your patient's IV pump. So how does the lumen of your pick line clot? So fibrin, which is this like insoluble protein is formed within the lumen of the line and it forms a clot that causes complete or partial blockage. So how do we fix it? So we use a medication called Ultiplase. So in the hospital, they're gonna to refer to it as TPA. So we instill this medication into the lumen and have it dwell, meaning sit for about 60 to 120 minutes. This is only to be infused by a licensed registered nurse with a doctor's order. If this is your first time, ask for help and follow your hospital protocol guidelines. A common question is when should you not administer TPA medication? So if there is any type of swelling on the site of the access, such as like the neck, the face, or the limb, it is contraindicated as the concern is the risk of a blood clot in the affected extremity. So you should get an ultrasound um, to make sure you rule out any type of blood clot prior to administering any type of TPA. So let's move on to the skills part. So dosing is weight based and it varies amongst patient population. So it's different from pediatric to adult population. So in this scenario, I'm gonna focus on the adult population. So make sure you obtain an order for TPA Ultiplace, which is two milligrams per two mils for 30 kilograms or more. And again, this is adults only. So the equipment needed is your medication ordered, which is your TPA. You're gonna have sterile water in one vial and the other one is like a powder diluent. You need two 10 mil syringes and two needles, one pre-filled syringe with 0.9% normal saline, one needleless hub connector, a few alcohol preps, gloves, labels, and a plastic tape in your biohazard bin. So how to prepare. So start with your hand hygiene. Always wash your hands and apply those gloves. So step number one, you're gonna withdraw 2.2 mils of sterile water, and you will add 2.2 mils of sterile water to the vial to yield two milligrams per two mils and avoid using bacteriostatic water. Step two, gently swirl the vial of the medication. This allows the drug to mix and the contents to completely dissolve. Allow three minutes and do not shake. Step three, you're gonna draw up the ordered dose of two mils into your new sterile syringe and label the medication. Step four, you're gonna clean the hub with a vigorous scrub at least five seconds using an antiseptic pad of the affected lumen. After scrubbing the hub, allow it to dry completely, then clamp the pick line and disconnect the needleless connector cap and clean with a vigorous scrub at least five seconds using an antiseptic pad and allow it to dry completely. As a side note, for total occlusion, you add a stop cock to the port, but assuming you have partial occlusion of your line, let's move on to step number five. So with step number five, you attach the TPA filled syringe to the hub and unclamp the line. Position your syringe in a vertical position and then pull the plunger back to the eight milliliter line and use a gentle push-pull motion on the plunger of the syringe. Then you're gonna clamp the lumen of the pick line 
keeping the syringe in place, you're gonna tape and secure and place a label. Do not use declotting CRN. I'll also indicate on the label the dwell, start time, date, and my initials. Moving on to step number six, after the wait time is done, you wanna unclamp the pick line, aspirate the drug infuse, plus five mils of blood. With success of declotting the lumen, I will flush like with a new sterile cap attached to my 10 cc syringe and I will flush five to 10 mils of 0.9% sodium chloride. So step number seven, if unable to aspirate, I'm gonna reclamp the lumen of the pick line and wait another 30 to 60 minutes and then reattempt same method. If it's still unsuccessful, I'm gonna notify the ordering provider on next steps. So step number eight, I'm gonna make sure all my documentation is complete on my MAR. And most importantly, I'm gonna document the patient's response to treatment and include the total dwell time needed to declot the lumen and if it took one or two doses of medication. Be sure to check out one of my other videos and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.